everyone, and welcome back to another edition of Metcast Movie Journal. This is the show where I do quick reviews for the movies that I watch, give them a score out of 10, and then add them to my list. So let's see what movie we're reviewing today. On March 27th, I watched The Highwaymen, which came out in 2019. <clears throat> and this is yet another based on a true story film, but weirdly this one chose to focus in on a lesser known aspect of the very well known story of Bonnie and Clyde centering its attention on the two Texas Rangers responsible for tracking and ultimately killing the famous criminal couple. I had the same complaint when it came to Argo, where it just seemed like the more exciting and interesting story was happening slightly off-screen, and while the movie we got was still interesting enough on its own, it hurts it a bit to know that there's something even more interesting happening in the background. It was definitely the single biggest result of my watching this one, it just made me really want to watch the original Bonnie and Clyde film from 1967. I'm sure I'll get to it, but for now, my only frame of reference will have to be this film, starring Kevin Costner as the lead Frank Hammer, with his partner Manny Galt being played by Woody Harrelson. It certainly helps a lot having two actors I respect and enjoy so much, since the entire movie was carried almost exclusively by these two. Kathy Bates makes a small appearance as the governor of Texas, but the part is so small and incidental, it feels more like a waste having my favorite actress fill such a meaningless role. I haven't seen many Netflix-produced movies yet, and I don't even have Prime yet but I weirdly get the same feeling from both studios lately, that they're pumping a ton of money into these projects to hire the biggest names in acting and directing, sparing nothing when it comes to special and visual effects, so the finished projects always look good, but they're far too unconcerned with the overall quality of the story or the script supporting them. And normally writing a review for a two-hour movie wouldn't be a problem, but even with how long this one was, it genuinely didn't contain much to talk about without just narrating the entire story for you. And even if I did that, the entire plot synopsis on IMDb is only six paragraphs long, so it's only about as long as a normal review I would write. It's probably not a good thing that I could tell you everything that happened in a two-hour movie in the span of a three-minute review, but sadly that's the case here. Obviously, even someone that knows nothing of the true story will know it's not going to end well for Bonnie and Clyde, but in the two hours leading up to this foregone conclusion, I can't think of a single interesting thing that happened along the way that made me thankful for having seen it. Usually watching a based on a true story should have at least a couple of those fun knowledge nuggets that can make you feel smart when you tell your friends about it. But this movie had none of that. Costner and Harrelson did as much as they could with that limited script, but even my love for Woody wasn't enough to keep my attention throughout this boring affair. By the end, I was just happy it was over. Still, though, my love for the two leads kept this from ever being aggressively bad, and I was never in danger of giving up on it before the end, but it was also never able to spark any legitimate emotional reaction. I think it's a category a lot of my threes or fours would fall into, since the ones and twos are reserved for the ones that I could barely sit through. And I really wanted to like this one, but I don't think I could ever overcome the fact that it was inherently based on the less interesting part of a story I really want to know more about. It's a bad sign, too, that the most interesting part of the entire movie was that 30-second wrap-up at the end with the real-life footage and the captions explaining what happened to the real people. I don't think I'll ever get around to rewatching this one, since I'd probably rather read a book about it, and that's saying something. I definitely need to check out the original Bonnie and Clyde, and hopefully I'll end up enjoying that one a bit more than this one. I ended up giving this one a 3 out of 10, and it landed at number 1,206 on my list, putting it right here, in between Roadhouse and National Security. And as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching another edition of Metcalf's Movie Journal. Be sure to click like and subscribe for new videos every week. And if you have a movie that you really want me to watch, be sure to drop me a comment.